Hey Kiwi. Hey. Did, did you get a chance to read this? Uh, yeah. So, so, what do you, you know? What do you make of that? Um. Okay. Can I be honest? Yeah. Uh, sounds like a crock of. Uh, do you something. Think, <laughs> do you think that PCV valve is a is a EPA government conspiracy to help us make us force us to burn more fuel? I don't think it's a conspiracy. No, it's uh, the EPA can get a bit carried away at times. They make the manufacturers do things that aren't necessarily ludicrous. They the make best. Things, they make the but, manufacturers do things that are ludicrous. Yeah, but sometimes. But a PCV valve is is that's a good thing. So you don't think it's a, it's a vast conspiracy? You know, lizard people, <laughs> Illuminati, Hollow Earth, right? Well, you never know, but I doubt it. Because you know, I am the world's biggest conspiracy guy. Right. No, I, I'm serious. You know, I, right. tin foil hat. I'll wear it. No problem. I believe in all of this stuff, but not this, because this is. Perhaps you've not been wearing it enough. Maybe that's. You know. So, we got this in the instructions with the uh, that wave carburetor thing, and it's a common theme with these like uh, the, the vapor people and the wave carburetor people and everything that the PCV valve is like the thing that the EPA put on the American public to force us to burn more fuel and make our engines less efficient. No. Yeah, I know, right? Mm. Okay. I guess because they little, don't understand... A little bit of vacuum in your crankcase is, is It's a great a thing. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to live a life where there was no vacuum in our crankcases. It would be going back to the dirty old days. Yeah, well, you used to see the old cars heading down the road with a little plume of smoke coming out from under in the engine bay from that road drive. <laughs> right. Just blowing smoke out. So... Let's go to the days before the PCV valve, and we have that turnpike cruiser engine right there. Yeah. So, you guys, this is this is what's known as a MEL, a Mercury Edsel Lincoln Ford motor. It's the uh, the predecessor to the FE. Yes. Right. I think of it as an oversized Y block. That's really what it is. Yeah. Lincoln had a similar engine. So. This engine here has a road draft tube system, which was the thing. Before PCV valves, we had road draft. So here, let me pop this out of here. Wow, oh, you really got it in there. Let's see what I cap. All right. You need my bananas, too. So before the PCV valve, we all had this. That's the road draft tube. And this slash cut right here hangs under the car and that slash cut as the car is going down the road the air is passing here and it causes a low pressure area here at the at the slash cut and it draws the vapors out of the engine so the downside to this is that if you're just idling or if you're in low speed traffic or anything like that there is no action here there isn't enough suction through this tube to evacuate crankcase gases so what you ended up with back in the day, in the 1950s, early 1960s, was engines that would, well, the, the, the blow-by gases would react with uh, normal condensation inside the engine. Uh, it would react with the oil and create this ungodly sludge, tar, black, jello kind of thing thing that would happen all through the inside of these engines. And it would actually kill them, you know, over, over, Road draft tube engines had a life expectancy of about 75 to 100,000 miles before you had to rebuild them. The rings were shot, bearings, or there would be oil starvation problems here and there because of that sludge that would build up. And the worst part was if you were a mechanic and you worked on pre-PCV engines, like these road draft tube engines, cracking open something with 100,000 miles on it meant like this, I mean, mess. Do you remember, you've worked on these early engines, yeah, right? Yeah, it's almost like, like working on a diesel engine. Exactly. Working yeah, on, just, you just come out black. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the kind of thing that anybody who works on engines from the modern era cannot appreciate. Yeah. And then, of course, there was the, the general environmental effect, because while the road draft tube system works okay if you're going 30, 40, 50 miles an hour down the road, you're sitting in traffic, especially in the cities, traffic smelled. And it wasn't exhaust. It had it, it was it was a, an oily. Um, it, you're old enough to remember that, right? Can, can you smell yeah. traffic? I see pictures yeah. of traffic from like you know the 1960s, 
and I can smell it. It's true. You still smell it. I mean, the other thing, damage that it did was it actually put quite a bit of oil down onto the surface of the road. You'd sit there idling, yep. and there'd be, there'd be, the oil would be dripping out of that, that um, out of the road, road draft, draft tube. And, uh, you know, then it rains, and you've got an ice skating ring going on. Yeah, I forgot about that. Anytime it would rain, the street would be just a rainbow. Yeah, you get the blue and the reds and the, you know those colors, that rainbow colors, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that was all pre -P The PCV valve is what changed that. In 1963, the uh, federal government said, well, you know what, you can't, you can't just have these gases and vapors and liquids and everything all over the road. You got to clean them up. So the answer was the PCV valve. Do you have a PCV valve handy? I can grab you one. Yeah. So there's the nefarious PCV valve. This was the government's solution to fixing this issue, and it actually worked. It's one of the few cases in the history of man where the government employed a device, or mandated a device, and it actually helped everybody across the board. Simplest thing in the world now. So instead of the road draft tube, we have a vent to let air inside of the engine. And it's almost always on... One of the valve covers, the inlet side, the vent will be on one of the valve covers, and most of them will attach to the air cleaner. You'll have a hose that will come from the vent to the air cleaner, and that's essential to get fresh air into the engine, because on the other side of the motor, you've got the PCV valve, and this is using manifold vacuum to pull those gases out. So where you had stagnation at low speed or, or no speed, you know, in traffic with the road drift, you've got constant uh, ventilation, constant positive ventilation of the crankcase anytime the engine is running. This keeps those gases from mixing with the, con the condensation inside and the oil and whatnot and causing all of those, that craziness. The downside to these, well, there is, I, can you think of a downside to a PCV valve? Not really, not really. Have you ever built a street engine and left the PCV valve off? I have. Um, but it's more, more, it's more of a race orientated thing. A lot of, a right. lot of die hard races, you know, will say that you know it, it's a power robbing thing, and it's it's really not. No, um, I don't think anyone can back that up on a dyno and say, here yeah, we put the PC valve out, PCB valve on, and we lost ten horsepower. That never happened. Well, I could go one step further than that. Stock eliminator racers that are limited to extremely small carburation, like two barrel classes and whatnot. Right will run two PCV valves huh. because what it'll, they'll actually act as an extra barrel to the carburetor. You have dogs? <laughs> no, but the landlord does. Okay. <laughs> they'll actually run a pair of PCV valves to create a little bit of extra vacuum leak and it'll add 20 or 30 CFM to an undersized carburetor. So you, you combine that vacuum leak with a little richer jenning and you've actually got some extra horsepower. So, and that's not to be confused with pan evacuation systems like that you would use on, a, on a, a really high performance motor where you would go beyond the PCV valve and now you, they use uh, either a vacuum system to pull the gases out not only pull the gases up, but create a vacuum inside the crankcase mm. to reduce pumping losses as the engine is running. And then you've got the evacuation systems that tie into a header, and they'll use pretty much the same, same principle as the slash cut, but they'll put this in the collector, and as the exhaust is passing through, it'll create a vacuum and pull the crankcase pressures and, and gases out that way. But the PCV valve itself, I, I would not go back to the pre-PCV days for all the money in the world because I was there and it was terrible and this thing has gone a long way. This one simple device doubled the effective lifespan of the average internal combustion engine where an engine from the 1950s or the early 1960s would last 75 to 100,000 miles before it needed a re-ring or just a complete rebuild it essentially doubled it so that when you got to the 1970s and 1980s, engines would go 150, 200,000 miles before rebuilt. You don't drop it down there, Tony. <laughs> and that <laughs> is the sole reason. That's it. The PCV valve. The most beneficial thing the government has ever done to the internal combustion engine. What's this going in? It's going in a 57 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. That's the one you've got outside. Yeah, it's a big battleship. It's huge. Are you going out? You've got a channel going now. Yes, we do. 
Yep, uh, Kiwi Classics and Customs. Um, come over and take a look. We've got a lot of interesting stuff in the shop. We, it's never a dull day around here. We've got something new just about every day. Like, what's, what's going on over there? Uh, we've got um, Split Bumper Camaro. That's a uh, nice car. It's actually an RS model. And that's getting some Detroit speed front suspension. Hey, who's that working on thing there? That's Barry. That's uh, Chief Mechanic. Uh, awesome car painter, hey guys. general all-rounder, and he's now head cameraman. Head cameraman? Yeah. 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 That's exciting. <laughs> off for the camera. Yeah. Name yeah. of the channel. What's that? Oh, name of the channel? Yeah. Ki Kiwi Classics and Customs. So head over there and subscribe. Kathy will put the link someplace. She's good like that. She puts links. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. And this is going in that turnpike cruiser. Yeah. What size is this? That is a 368. This is one of the smaller Mel's. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, the Mel's, yeah. Mel's came in some pretty gigantic size. Yeah, they went up over 400 four cubic two. inches, yeah. yeah. So. so, you'll be seeing more of this on uh, his channel. It's quite a behemoth, the car. Yeah, it's so quite it's a behemoth cool. of an engine. <laughs> yeah, I tried to like just scoot it over a little bit uh, before yeah, no, I was not, No, no you, you scoot a small block Jimmy, you don't scoot a Mel. You don't though. scoot a Mel. <laughs> All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, I mean, there are other conspiracies we'll have to <laughs> but not now. Yeah, we don't have all week. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't really think we made it to the moon. Really? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's not talk about it now. <laughs> Can't you say it? No. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. See you guys.